Good afternoon. I'm Patrick, and I will talk about my work assessment of optimization methods for automatic tuning of segmentation parameters. Well, this is the outline. I will talk a little bit about the GA. I will talk a little about the derivative free optimization method. And it's a, just a briefly explanation. You can read more on the literature in the reference on the paper. Well, what's the problem? For good classification accuracy, we need some parameters to be tuned. But the problem is that the relation of the input parameters and the segmentation outcome are not clear. So the common approach for doing that is to use a manual trial and error process and, and some stochastic techniques like the genetic algorithms. Um, but the GA has some disadvantage. They are non-determinist. They have some parameters to be also selected and they have a high computational cost. So this is a frame of we are talking about here. We have some initial parameters and together with an input image, we'll try to segment the, the image and then with the result of the segmentation, we compare with some reference, the desired outcome and we can apply some object function so as to give a numerical value of how good the segmentation was. And then the optimization process try to give some new parameters to get the segmentation better. So the object here is to assess derivative free optimization methods for the automatic adaptation of the segmentation parameters. And we will analyze the accuracy and the computational cost the methods we used here were the generalized pattern search, the mesh adaptive direct search, and the nether mid, and we use the genetic algorithm as benchmark. Oh, the GA are stochastic methods, and they work like the natural selection. The worst individuals are discarded, the fittest ones will generate new ones, and it will use some genetic operators like crossover and mutation. The derivative free optimization methods do not require any knowledge about derivatives of the function, neither the estimates for the, these derivatives. And they are also good for the object function that when is, it's unknown, like black box functions, the, when the object function is not smooth, and when it's uh, possible to obtain their derivatives. Uh, so these methods involve some moving into the parameter space. Uh, the directional direct search moving in some directions, like find uh, neighbor points. And the simplicial direct search moving using a simplex. So how does the directional direct search work? And starting from iteration, the goal is to find a new point where the object function will decrease. So it looks the pattern in some given directions and at a certain distance that's called step size. Um, if a better function value is found, then the step size can remain or it will be increased, otherwise it's contracted. Here, uh, a small example to, uh, to be better understand. Uh, for instance, we'll move on the north, south, east, and west on the parameter space. And the first point, point that makes the object function to decrease, it will be select for next step. So here we'll walk on north at the step size, and we'll try going on the directions. And if we find a better value, we will move to the next step. So we can, we can walk around. And when no, no, no point move is fine, then we'll decrease the step size and keep on going. So we worked with the GPS and AMADS as the directional direct search methods. And the main difference about them is the local exploration of the space of variables and the number of directions. 
The simply show direct search is a little bit different. The main idea is to build a non-degenerate simplex and use it to conduct the search. So the Nelder Meet is the most popular simply show direct search method. And it works with the, the vertices. Each vertice is a set of parameters, parameters of the simplex, and they are evaluated using the objective function. So the worst vertex must be replaced, and a new point will be found uh, to approximate the solution using some operations. These operations are the Neldermitt movements, like the expansion, contraction, reflection, and shrink. So for instance, we have in the parameter space three points in the R2, and if the worst point is the, the first, we'll move like that on the movements. Uh, I have to talk a little bit about the object function user. And so the function compares the segmentation result with some reference objects, and this reference will represent the objects of interest. So it will return a numerical value that will re represent the dissimilarity between the reference and outcome. And we want to minimize this function to find the best set of parameters. The object function to use it was the reference bound segments booster. Um, they are formulated there. So if we have um, a set of reference objects and in one with, sorry, we will find the segment, the segment from the result that has the largest intersection with the object of the reference, and then we'll compare like that, and saying that the true positive pixels will be in the intersection of them, the false negatives will be the pixels that belong to the reference, but not belong to the segment, and the false positives is are the pixels that belong to the segment and not to the reference. And the function is the average of all reference objects. So we analyzed the number of executions and the dissimilarity value reached for each method of optimization. And the segmentation program we used was an implementation of the mute scale algorithm proposed by Batson Shep that used the scale parameter the color and shape wave, the compact and the smoothness wave, and the bandless wave. We used two images, uh, different images, and some delineated, we delineated some reference, and we used the functions that were present on MATLAB, and we used some different configurations for each method. For GPS, we changed the size of base, the polling order, the expansion factor, and the contraction factor. We did the same for MADS. And for GA, we changed the population, the selection method, the crossover function, and the mutation function. And here, it's important to note that we used a very conservative number of population, 8 and 10. It's not common, but we use it to use the minimum executions of GA. So here are the results. We can see that GPS and MADS uh, give, give a good result. It's, it's important to note that the zero is the actual the best result, because we are finding the dissimilarity value between the reference and outcome. So the GPS and MADS and give, give the overall best result. Uh, the GA was a little bit higher, and the nether mid uh, did not converge. It find a local minima or resulted in some problem. And the number of executions? The number of executions of GPS and the MADS are very low than the GA. For IM2, uh, the same occurred. GPAs and MADS 
presented better results than GA, and nether meat did not converge again. And when we look to the number of executions, we can see that a GPS has the small number of executions, followed by MADS, and then the GA, and the nether meat is not considered because they did not find a good dissimilarity value. So the conclusions are that GPS and MADS uh, achieved an overall better accuracy and at a less number of executions, even when we used a too conservative population size for GA. Although MADS is more frequent in the recent literature, GPS achieved better results in most of our experiments when we consider the number of executions. And the results strongly suggest that GPS and MADS can be effective for these tags as alternative to GA, especially in what refers to the cost. When we analyze the, the similarity values, we can see that the best absolute values as well as the best average value were obtained by the MADS but the difference is relatively small when comparing with GPS. And the nether meat seems to have achieved a local minimum and did not deliver a good result. And since GPS presents the best balance between number of executions and the dissimilarity value, GPS seems to be the most recommended method for tuning segmentation parameters. Of course, more experiments are planned and have to be done on the continuation of this research, using different images, using different objective functions, more reference objects, and other derivative-free optimization methods. So well, that's it. I'd like to thank you for the attention. And if you have any questions.